One of the first rules you learn in the world of investing is low supply, high demand pushes the price up. Scarcity is critical when deciding which investments have opportunity and potential. Silver is king when we look at this very important fundamental rule. The lack of supply and massively growing demand is only pulling farther and farther apart. Demand exceeding the supply by hundreds of millions of ounces. And this record-breaking supply deficit will keep breaking this record over and over and over. See, numbers don't lie. The growing demand will continue to rapidly grow as we go green. Production has been decreasing over the past seven years. And silver's a byproduct when miners are looking for gold, lead, zinc. And most silver's also thrown away, never to be recycled. These are facts. And anyone saying otherwise simply isn't doing their homework. Or maybe they are. But if you're going to do your homework, at least make sure you get the answers correct. Welcome back, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. Folks, if you're new, welcome. I post daily silver-related videos, always keeping you in the loop. You will never miss a beat over here. Make sure you click subscribe if you think that is interesting. Plus, I do giveaways. I do live streams. I have a podcast called The Silver Stacking Podcast with Andy Sheckman, which is the CEO of Miles Franklin. I also do poll videos. I do core silver stacking videos, the fundamentals, supply, demand. I do it all over here. Everything you could think of related to silver. This, the Silver Institute, I call the holy grail of information, right? When the Silver Institute posts their numbers, every other site goes off of their information. Well, Yahoo Finance posted something that came directly from the Silver Institute titled, Global Silver Industrial Demand Forecast to Achieve New High in 2023. We are just now technically going green i mean it, yes it's been a couple of years but when you look at where we're trying to go zero net emissions by the year 2050 every automobile company by the year 2030 will be electric i mean we're just now starting we're just breaking the ice we already are setting record-breaking supply deficits we're already massively under achieving and it's only going to get worse one point what one point to 1 billion ounces this year. Imagine how many billions of ounces it will be by the year 2026, 20, 2030. Where are we gonna get that silver from? It's not possible. I wanna go over this article and there's actually another article that came out a day after the first article titled, Silver Market to See Record Industrial Demand Outweighing Lackluster Investment Demand and ETF Outflows from Metals Focus. You can see that this is catching wind and um, I feel like nowadays the silver shortage is blatantly obvious. When I was talking about this years and years ago, nobody else really would. I would have to really like scrounge around and try to find some good, decent uh, articles that would talk about it because the information has always been there from the Silver Institute, at least. That's why I call them the Holy Grail of information because it always led to their numbers but nowadays it's common it's it's common talk and all those people that said i was crazy for thinking this now keep their mouths shut or try to still say it's a myth and that's because of their ego they don't want to admit they were wrong anyways though regardless uh make sure you like the video if you like the video and um let's talk about silver Silver market expected to register another sizable structural deficit. And they say sizable, we're talking about hundreds of millions of ounces. What we produce around 850 million ounces on a good year where demand is already breaking billions. This is bad. Silver industrial demand is expected to grow 8% to a record of 632 million ounces this year. Key drivers behind this performance include investment in photovoltaics, which are also called PV cells, power grid, and 5G networks, growth in consumer electronics, and rising vehicle output. These key findings were reported by Philip Newman, Managing Director at Metals Focus, Sarah Tomlinson, Director of Mine Supply during the Silver Institute's annual Silver Industry Dinner in New York tonight. 
featuring historical supply and demand statistics and estimates for 2023. Other key highlights from their presentation include globally total silver demand, which is forecast to ease by 10% to reach 1.14 billion ounces in 2023. Gains in industrial applications will be offset by losses in other key in all other key segments despite the fall total demand remains elevated by historical standards making 2023 figure the second highest in metals focused data series that is insane and i just want to catch something right here before these people say you were wrong when they said the 632 million ounces that is not the annual demand the annual demand is 1.14 billion ounces Industrial demand, this is an important one, right? We could talk about um, total demand, but industry is really what's pushing, really what's pushing the levels of trying to keep up with the growing demand. Silver and jewelry is, or silver, right? Jewelry and silverware is nice. Physical, yes, it's nice. Uh, ETPs and ETFs, but when we're looking at the main problem here, it's industrial with mine production. Th that, that's the meat and potatoes. Industrial demand in 2023 will achieve a new annual high. That's scary. And it's only going, I mean, what, solar panel production is about to pull 50% higher in the next year? That, that's insane. And these things have very short half-life, by the way. Windmills, very short half-life. And then they're thrown away in landfills after a couple of years, never to be recycled. As noted above, key drivers in this growth are being driven by a strong green economy, including investment in photovoltaics, which I said earlier, are PV cells, power grids in 5G networks, as well as increased use of automotive electronics and supporting infrastructure improvements in PV were particularly noticeable as the increase in cell production exceeded silver thrifting, which helped drive electronics and electrical demand higher. And I made a video last week talking about how AI is actually going to boost silver demand with all the microchips and everything. We're headed in a new digital technological era. I forget who said this quote. I wish I could remember. I wish because it is the best quote. And when he said this a couple years ago, it really opened my eyes of the severity of the shortage. They said, and I quote, if you think we have enough silver to go green, you're living in la la land, end quote. That was beautiful. That really struck me as, as very, very important to take note of because it shows the severity. So um, silver jewelry and silverware demand is set to fall by 22% and 47% respectively to 182 million ounces and 39 million ounces this year. For both, losses are led by India, um, which by, you know, a lot of that's used for religious purposes and holidays, but festive stuff, but uh, where full year demand is expected to normalize after the surge in 2022, excluding India, global jewelry demand expected to edge slightly higher in 2023, while silverware will fall by notably smaller 12%. Physical investment in 2023 projected to fall by 21%. But also remember, a lot of people aren't selling. So maybe they're not, but it fell by 21% in terms of buying, but those people are holding on to it. So um, that's a 21% fall to a three year low of 263 million ounces. See, you see why I said industrial demand is the most important? Because these other things, 182 million ounces, 263, yeah, it adds up, but the meat and potatoes is industrial demand and mine output their mining output. Recycling is starting to catch up a little bit as well, though. Uh, while most markets have seen weaker volumes, losses have been concentrated in India and Germany. In India, record high local prices both deterred new investor purchases and led to profit taking, resulting in a 46% decline. Most markets have seen weaker volumes. Losses have been concentrated in India and Germany. Record high local prices deterred new investors, right? They're not buying because the price is so high. These people are buying, but they're just not selling. This led to profit taking as people sold, resulting, resulting in a 46% decline. U.S. investment has also turned lower, but only modestly, thanks to the safe haven demand following the regional banking crisis. 
and that rightfully so. Resilience of the U.S. market helps explain why global total stays historically high. And I think that's going to stay. I don't see that changing. I don't think people are just going to randomly forget about this, especially as things get worse. And if you guys want to see why or see proof, this article came out today, literally today. Um, what? <laughs> this article came out 34 minutes ago. That is... And I caught wind of it first. That's when I say you're going to get the newest, latest, freshest, most up-to-date recent information in the world of precious metals, more specifically silver. I mean that to a T. This article came out 35 minutes ago, and it's a very important video or a very important article about why silver skyrockets on Fed rate pause speculation. See, guys, like, I'm not making this stuff up. I do my homework, and I make sure the answers are correct with data. That's why you should subscribe. Um, not for my sake, for your own, and I genuinely mean that if you guys want this type of information on a daily basis. So ETPs are forecast to record net outflows for the second year in a row as was the case in 2022. The bulk of year-to-date redemptions reflect continued monetary tightening and its consequential boost to yields, especially in real terms. And that could be somewhat of a problem because these people that are turning in their contracts to physical, you know, there's not that, that, that ratio isn't one-to-one. -one. There's not that much physical silver as there is on the COMEX, and that would expose corruption and kill any type of price manipulation um so however the decline in holdings is expected to be more restrained at 40 million ounces in 2023 roughly a third of 2022's record outflow outflows um so nothing crazy yet global mine silver production is expected to fall by two percent to 820 million ounces see what i'm saying by the way mexico and peru are the number are, are both the biggest silver producers by over 50 percent just those two countries alone and those two countries got hit hard from covid and that's why there was such a massive shortage plus you know um the boundaries and borders were cut off and minimal workers for safety precautions but mexico and peru i think it's about 40 to 50 percent the rest is like chile australia um china is the biggest consumer but mexico and peru alone you know they, they, that's where all the silver's coming from. Um, and that's the lower outputs obviously going to affect that. But the whole point is 820 million ounces is what was mined. But remember what demand was 1.14 billion ounces. This is what I'm talking about when I say this problem isn't going away anytime soon and it's only going to get worse because if we're only pulling 820 million ounces and that's only a two percent fall so it's not like it's a very bad year i said the average on a good year is 850 million ounces i said that earlier in the video demand is only going to keep growing 1.5 billion ounces in a couple of years is not crazy but where is that silver going to come from you and me i mean fdr did confiscate people's silver before. Wait, Silver Slayer, that was gold. That was the executive order 6102 by FDR in 1933. Yes, that was gold, but a year later, there was another executive order, 6814, saying, turn in your silver or you'll pay $10,000 uh, as a fine or 10 years imprisonment or both. Did you guys know that? You probably didn't know that if you don't watch my channel. He did the same thing he did with gold, the oh so famous executive order 6102 taking everyone's gold there's another another one in 1934 a year later where he took everyone's silver if it happened before why couldn't it happen again isn't that crazy that that order was so you know it was swept under the rug that's why you gotta subscribe I'm not saying it for my sake it's because i do a lot of research i know a lot about this i can comfortably say i am an expert in this field now um, I, I truly can say that because I've done just as much research as any other expert and I've been in the game long enough to call myself that. Um, but yeah, so 
I am curious though, it, what they're going to try to do to fix this problem. Because even scientists now are onto this problem. There is, I've covered so many articles of scientists trying to find new ways to um, use chemicals to take silver out of certain things and uh, recycling boosting. Mines are getting protested, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Um, so it, it's, and I say it's funny because they said it pollutes the groundwater, but it's ironic because silver purifies water. It has antimicrobial properties. Not saying it wouldn't, it would still pollute the groundwater because there's more stuff mining than just silver. But it's just funny because what they're protesting is a metal they're digging up that purifies water. <laughs> um, uh, but anyways, and just to make clear, silver wouldn't purify that water. Like it's a, it, the protest makes sense in terms of it would probably, you know, pollute the water. But yes, you guys, you guys get what I'm saying. Some people probably take me too literal though. So, like I said a second ago, silver's a byproduct, and what they're looking for is gold, lead, and zinc, right? Well, what I said earlier, I'm not making the stuff up that I say. You can fact check me on anything I say. Uh, output from lead and zinc mines will also increase as a Udokin in, in Russia comes on stream, a decrease in byproduct credits which I was saying an increase in sustaining capital spending and inflation of input costs will all lead to double digit year on year growth in the AISC. Overall, despite weaker demand and a slight drop in total supply, the global silver market is forecast to see another sizable physical deficit in 2023, marking the third consecutive year of annual deficit. And like I said in the introduction, that record is going to keep getting broken and broken and broken. Again, third year in a row. At 140 million ounces, this will be 45% lower than 2022's all-time high, but this is still elevated by historical standards. Just as important, Metal Focus beliefs the deficit will persist in the silver market for the foreseeable future, what I was saying as well. Um, then they go into a little bit of a, of a, I guess, a forecast or a prediction, which I would say, you know, take with a grain of salt because... So many unknown variables, but these numbers down here don't lie. Um, so Metals Focus expects the average silver price to increase by 6% year on year to $23.10 through November 7th. Prices have grown by 8% year on year. Going forwards, Metals Focus are firmly in the higher for longer camp as far as U.S. interest rate expectations are concerned. This backdrop is not favorable for zero yielding assets such as silver. The white metals investment appeal will also be hurt by poor confidence in industrial commodities due to a slowing Chinese economy. With this in mind, metal focus maintains a cautious outlook for the silver price for now and much for 2024. Um, so you can see all of the numbers, right? I mean, these these are numbers that I, you know, I live by. Not, I mean, I also, you know, go to other places, but the Silver Institute's numbers are very accurate, um, and they're very important to look at if you're someone who is looking at the fundamentals, which are supply and demand, right? So, anyways, I'm gonna wrap this video up. It's a very long video. We haven't even gone to the second article. I'll probably have to make another video just because, you know, there's so much information and I like to pause and break things down and give a little bit of uh, context and what I think. Um, so I think it makes the video more interesting than just reading an article. So yeah, anyways, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. Make sure you guys subscribe if you guys want daily silver content like this. Um, and also make sure if you wanted to purchase silver, send an email to info at milesfranklin.com. Let them know Silver Slayer sent you. Let them know that. Andy Sheckman will hook you up. He's the CEO. You probably saw him on my channel or somewhere. He's all over the place because he is one of the most respected people in the game. And he will always make sure everything goes smoothly and accordingly. And if it didn't for some reason, he will fix it. Or I will you could email me and I will tell him to fix it. 
right? So it's like a safeguard. It's like buying from your friend compared to someone online you don't know, and you're just hoping that they will fix it or respond, right? Over here, it's like buying from your friend. You know, it's, a, it's pretty cool that I can offer you guys that opportunity, and they have very good prices. So anyways, yeah, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.